In our final section for this module, we will look at starting, stopping, and restarting runtimes. Starting, stopping, and restarting your Atom Molecule or Atom Cloud runtime is a common task. There are a number of reasons why you may need to do this. Whenever you make a change to your runtime configuration, it requires a restart for that change to take effect. Our technology is constantly being updated and improved, so Dell Boomi performs monthly platform releases which require a restart. If your runtime ever crashes or is down for any connectivity or system issues, it needs to be started again. Finally, any physical hardware maintenance, such as adding memory or replacing the motherboard, would require an Atom Molecule or Atom Cloud restart. You can see your Atom running in the Window Services tool. You can find this tool by going to Windows and searching for Services, or by selecting Control Panel, Administrative Tools, and Services. To start a local Atom, simply select the Atom and then click Start the Service. To start a local Atom in Linux, in the bin directory of the Atom install directory, enter bash atom start. Starting a molecule uses the same procedure as an Atom, however the start node command must be entered for each node and beginning with the head node. Molecules appear online once a single node is up, however the nodes must be verified as being started via the node's container log. A warning will appear in Atom management until all nodes have been started. The status will then change in the molecule properties file. As part of the restart, stop, and upgrade procedure, the runtime first enters a pause state to avoid impacting in-progress executions. When the runtime is in a pause state, the scheduler does not initiate any new scheduled executions. The shared web server, this might be the web services server or an AS2 server, and other listeners, this could be JMS or the Atom queue. These are all stopped and will not receive new inbound requests. Incoming client requests are denied. The runtime status Atom management displays as stopping slash restarting. Finally, a status update is written to the container log. The runtime remains in the pausing state until in-progress executions have completed or the force restart after X minutes limit has been reached, whichever one occurs first. This force restart after X minutes property plays a critical role in the runtime behavior during stopping and restarting by controlling if there are any in-progress executions that need to be aborted. If the property is not set, this is by default it is not set, so if the property is not set, the runtime waits indefinitely for in-progress executions to complete. Depending on the duration of those executions, it could mean no new scheduled or listener processes will run for quite a long time. If the property is set and a process is still running when the force restart limit is reached, it can be aborted mid-execution. Keep in mind, the runtime automatically restarts with platform releases. So to see the release schedule, you would want to visit trust.boomi.com. Let's take a look at that briefly to see what that website shows. Trust.boomi.com is Boomi's website to give up-to-the-minute information on performance, maintenance, and information on how your data is secured. If you click on the Notifications tab, you will see a schedule of all upcoming releases. The release control date shows when the new update is ready for your testing, and the release date shows when that new update will be applied. To stop a local atom in the Windows environment, you must begin at the Start menu again to be able to navigate to the Services tool. Next, you would select your atom, and you can select the Stop or Restart option as is displayed in this screenshot. To stop a local Atom in Linux, in the bin directory of the Atom install directory, enter bash atom stop. Molecules are similar to atoms, however the same stop atom command must be entered for each individual node. A molecule is considered stop when both nodes are stopped via the node's container log. As each node stops, a warning message appears in atom management. And when a node shuts down successfully, its file is deleted from the directory. 
Molecules and atom clouds have a shared directory named bin slash views, which contains one file from each of the molecules or atom clouds nodes and is named after its node using the format node.localhostid.dat, as you can see in the screenshot here. Each file is a property file containing the current state of the cluster from the perspective of that relevant node. Because this file is maintained on the shared file system, each node in the cluster is able to see the current state of every other node in the cluster. This gives each node in the cluster and the person administering the molecule or atom cloud the ability to detect a wide range of clustering problems. When a stop is issued, these files are deleted as the node shuts down. Never manually delete these files or it will cause severe issues with your molecule. Each .dat file contains the following information. The address, hostname, and status of the molecule, the location of the head node, and the number of nodes contained in the molecule. If you are working through stopping or restarting your atom and you find that the .dat file still exists in that directory, then the nodes may still be shutting down. Here we've come full circle. This screenshot again shows that when you are in the services window, you can select your atom and then click start to start the atom again. For Linux, from within your bin directory, type bash atom restart. When performing a full restart on a molecule, power down each one of the child nodes individually, making sure that the head node is powered down as the very last one. Then verify that all nodes are shut down by checking the DAT files are removed from the bin slash views folder and the container logs to indicate that the shutdown is complete. Once the nodes are shut down, the process to power up each node individually can begin, starting with the head node. Be sure to verify each node is online before moving to the next. One of the great things about a molecule is that you can do a rolling restart, which enables the runtime to stay online, even as you perform a restart of each node. To do this, we must restart each child node individually. Be sure to verify the node has been restarted before continuing. This is done by checking the DAT files are removed from the bin slash views folder and the container logs indicate the shutdown is complete. Like a regular restart, the head node will be restarted last and as a result, the head node will change. Finally, verify the final restart and head node assignments.